So we're going to bring Stephen up. Stephen. Cheers, thank you. I think, um, uh, I think to that actually I'd say it's more like herding cats um, than cattle. Um, cattle actually reasonably listen to what you, what you say. <laughs> um, right, so, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Stephen and uh, I'm the um, Head of Development at Figured. I'm also um, a daddy to two young daughters and I'm a keen sports person. Um, hence the photo, that was a day out with my brothers on some quad races and um, as you can see, it was a rather muddy day. Um, I'm also really passionate about um, finding the simple approach to problems and um, delivering the product that the customer needs. And I really enjoy seeing uh, colleagues get the most of their work, um, get, sorry, get the most out of their work lives and being in control of their work days. So um, I really hope that these themes of simplicity and product delivery and ownership um, comes through in today's talk. I've been involved in development and management for 15 years now, which seems like quite a long time when I think about it. Um, and 10 of those years was in the UK where I was building uh, services for video streaming um, and mobile and sports social apps um, and uh, telephone payment systems. And during that time, I worked on a number of uh, frameworks that were very bespoke to the uh, business at, at the time. And they were very difficult and um, had absolutely no consistency. It's actually very similar to um, some of the code that Sam was showing earlier on, to be honest, which is a scary thing. Um, might have even been my code or something. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we all learn, don't we? Um, so around that time, uh, sorry, so yeah, around that time I came back to New Zealand uh, and I started seeing a lot about Laravel. Um, it was really showing up uh, in, the, in the development circles. And I really liked the um, simplistic and efficient, efficient approach, uh, approaches that they had chosen. And so I decided to uh, get involved. And like most developers probably here, I um, signed up to Jeffrey Way's amazing tutorials. And I learned as much as I could on there. And at the same time, I decided to um, sort of reach out into um, the Auckland market, uh, where I was based, and um, see what meetups there would be for Laravel and I bumped into Figured. I went along to uh, Figured's uh, first Laravel meetup, and two months later, um, I had a job there. So it, it worked out great. So I, I started working at Figured, um, I, sorry, my Figured experience started in uh, 2017. And um, now I'll just talk a little bit about um, what Figured is, although, to be honest, you guys all saw the video uh, earlier on, and, and I think that probably summed it up um, quite well, but um, I'll go into hopefully a little bit more detail, um, or just, go over the same stuff again. Uh, so we're a cloud-based financial forecast service uh, for the agricultural sector. And we started in 2014, um, and we have um, the majority of the team in New Zealand, in, uh, sorry, in Auckland, New Zealand. And, uh, but we also are very much an international company with teams in Australia, America, and the UK. Uh, we're the only farm accounting software that allows the whole farming team to uh, collaborate around the same data in real time. And this is um, the, the farmer themselves, uh, the consultants, the bankers, and the accountants. And they're all, walking, uh, all working towards a profitable farm. That's obviously the whole idea of um, this software. So today uh, at Figured, we have 22 developers. And by the end of this year, we should have around 28. Um, and so you, you get the idea of the uh, pace that we're growing at the moment. Um, the development team is made up of purely senior developers, which I think is um, quite a unique approach. Um, but during the summertime, we also take on interns. We operate a, a very flat structure uh, w with these highly skilled um, team members, and we empower them to make a difference. The business itself um, has really strong values, and we use those to um, guide ourselves um, and guide our direction every day. Uh, and we celebrate when we see these team members um, using them. I've got them listed up there. Um, you might spot a few funny ones. Um, they are give a damn, work in the open, make bold decisions, and don't be a dick. I put that one down the bottom because I wasn't too sure if it was appropriate to put right in the middle there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously we use, we use Laravel. Um, that's, that's really why we're here as well. Um, so we use Laravel, and there's... There's a whole lot of reasons why we chose Laravel, but some of the key points are um, definitely it's strong community 
um, that's supporting it, and just like we are here today with so many people. Um, the way that it encourages simplicity um, during the development and, this, and, the dis and the speed of delivery for the products. So today I'm going to talk about um, building a modular monolith with Laravel and self-managing teams. And this is very much um, from a figured point of view, so um, I hope you guys can all take something from this. We are, a, we are definitely a product-focused team, and um, I think this is something that's quite easily said, uh, but quite difficult to achieve. So I'm hoping that during these slides you, you're going to um, understand what I mean by that and, and how we go about try and, trying to achieve that. Uh, we also listen to the needs um, of the business and we try and react quickly. And we work hard to keep everything simple, just as uh, Taylor has with Laravel. Uh, to cover my topic today, I'm going to focus on three important aspects of the development team. Uh, packages, which is how we code. Laravel, which is um, for the consistent and simplistic approaches that we use. And pods, um, which is how our teams work. So, um, we, have a mod we have a monolith um, code base, and it, is, it works great for us. Because um, I think the main reason for this is because our scaling complexity is more in the data. Uh, we have terabytes of data and billions of financial transaction lines to deal with. Um, and I think an interesting point about this is that it may also work for you. I feel that a lot of people these days, um, they hear monolith and they get quite uh, scared or think they're going in the wrong direction because everyone else is going microservice. But um, actually, you know, it might very well work for you. And just to prove the point, here we are, a reasonably successful uh, development company at the moment, um, and we're on a monolith. So we use packages um, to get our modularity, and the packages um, actually share common functionality. So they're, so they're not a standalone um, package, but they must provide separations of concern. For our separations of concern, uh, we use clear boundaries through interfaces, and this in turn creates a um, self-documenting um, process. And I think, um, might have been Sam as well, um, earlier on mentioned self-documenting process. Um, but um, it really does work for us. And if you, if, you have your, um, if you have your interfaces documented correctly, then it's really easy for uh, new, developers to come new developers to come along and look um, at, at those and understand what this package is trying to do um, and how you can use it. So it really does matter of the quality of the, um, of the comments on those self-documenting processing. Um, we also have um, package structure, um, which is kind of like a micro Laravel. And um, this is an interesting point because both Freak and uh, JMac were talking about this um, in, their, in their talks. Um, and we've got a third version, I guess, in between those two. So our package structure is built, as I say, like a, um, a, like a micro Laravel. It has its service provider for um, the package bootstrapping and um, models, assets, events, uh, repositories, all the, all the expected things you might have in the package. And to ensure that we have clear uh, data um, services in there, we also use uh, DTOs. And we repeat this throughout all the packages so that no matter what package you're working on, you're experiencing the same thing. So what this gives us is modularity um, and autonomous uh, development and low dependencies. I've got an MVP written up there as well, um, and I think this is really important, especially is for our for our company. So it's um, part of the fast the part of the fast delivery and um, being focused on the product. So we build um, what the customer wants right now. Uh, we don't try and build the next unicorn. We're not trying to imagine what the, the future might be and, and um, how many servers we might need and what separation we might need um, at that point. Um, we're delivering a product as fast as we can and getting it in the customer's, ham, in the customer's hands. Um, it is MVP, which to some people might sound a little bit scary, but, um, but what, it is, what it is is perfect MVP, um, and it is very perfect and polished code. So it's never anything that's hacked. It's not about getting it out there um, as fast as you can at, at any quality. It's, it's still uh, very high quality. What this helps do is it helps avoid uh, misplaced effort with, with the unknown what-ifs, um, and it also um, helps if you need to pivot fast. So um, being in a, reason, in a 
startup situation, which we kind of still are, although we've been around since 2014, um, we try and stay in that startup um, situation. It's, we do find a lot of changes coming in at times, and if you haven't invested too heavily in, in code and you're focusing on MVP, then it is quite easy to pivot at some point, and you're not throwing away a huge amount of time and resource. Um, and this also helps us better understand the complexities and the goals before committing um, all that time and resource to the problems or the solutions or the um, functional stuff. Anyway, um, it also gives us, um, so what this gives us, sorry, is um, quick to market, complexity investigation, um, small iterative steps, and many deployments. And I think you'll probably all agree that um, multiple small deployments is a, is a safer way to go. So Laravel and um, its part in, in playing in this is, um, so we strive for consistency through conventions um, for our code base, and Laravel provides that reliability and convention um, at the core framework level. Laravel also provides rich, easy to use features such as uh, Telescope and Envoyo and Eloquent and what have you, all, all this wrapped up in different ways um, to make life easier and faster for us. And uh, Laravel has that strong community of support and documentation um, that means that anyone coming onto our code base is able to go out there and, and understand very quickly um, how we work. Um, and they can obviously come in with those skills already from so many other companies um, that are using Laravel as well. Um, so Laravel guides us um, in the approaches that we use. This all leads to a very soft landing for new developers and fast development. Uh, it also is uh, predictable code that is easy um, and quick to follow, and it provides us with a common language when we're talking to each other about ideas and problems. Um, it's also a base from which we can build um, the packages that I've talked about. So when I was writing all this down, I decided that it kind of sounded like we were, we were robots and we were just um, doing everything that um, following Laravel, but, but we're very much not. Um, they're, they are the guidelines um, for our direction, but they're not, uh, they're not the law, so um, we do sometimes deviate. And, and what we want is um, autonomy, um, but our dev principles and our values um, are something that are not up for negotiation. So um, definitely focusing on, on trying to provide that autonomy, but um, values obviously can't be, um, can't be negotiated. So consistency through the conventions. Um, I think consistency is a hard cultural process uh, to embed, and especially in a rapidly changing industry. Um, what we do is we roll with it um, because it's coming in near on daily uh, with new ideas and, and uh, thoughts. And um, we talk about the openly talk about the pros and cons of um, all of these ideas before we chase uh, a particular fad. We use ADRs, um, architectural decision records, for uh, when needed to nail down the boundaries of implementation and to give an absolute clarity um, to the developer. This really, again, helps with um, new devs coming on board when they're looking at a piece of code um, and they're trying to understand why we might have chosen to do something a particular way. They can go to the ADR and, and that explains um, why we chose to do it and, and how we go through the process. Um, we trust the team. We trust the teams with um, ownership and responsibility to develop in a sensible way. So I think this is a really important point um, as well, where it does all come down to trust, and um, and you have to give that trust to your to your developers. So they really thrive um, on that ownership uh, of the code, and they want to make um, a difference to the product in general. We review hard, um, but fair, and, and never personally um, when we're looking at the code. So all of our code goes um, obviously through reviews, and uh, I, th I don't think anyone, other than a, maybe a, a one-liner text change, I don't think anyone would get through an, a review without at least one comment. Um, and that's good, you know, we're all, we're all learning, we're all trying to improve on each other. It doesn't mean that comment um, was necessarily, necessarily right or the other person was necessarily wrong, but. Um, but it's all just ideas and, and communication. Um, so we lean uh, quite heavily on Laravel to provide us with these quick wins through these out-of-box solutions, uh, and we always try to avoid reinventing the, world, uh, the wheel. 
Um, so this achieves clarity, speed of development, uh, repeatable, predictable code, and working in the open. Grab a glass of wine. Um, the pods. So these are our teams, just to be clear. It's not, because um, we are in the agricultural business and what have you. It's not peas. Um, <laughs> so the, um, the, we have a high culture of trust, and I think I mentioned this just earlier, um, and ownership and, um, and giving a damn. And that's what we expect the, the developers to bring, uh, bring to work every day. Uh, and we employ, we employ these brilliant developers um, so we give them the opportunity to be brilliant. And I think this is another really um, important point where um, we don't want the developers to uh, come to work and sit in their chair and sit and wait to be told what to do or, or work off tasks from, um, from JIRA or something. What we want them to do is um, use all the skills that they've learned so far and make some really cool decisions, um, give, us, give us some really cool ideas, and we can all work together um, towards a better product. Um, this, these small pods bring a microservice ability to the internal structure, um, the thinking and the capability of the development team. So is another, another interesting point here that uh, we have this monolithic code base, but we have these, these pods which are almost like uh, little microservices of, um, of teams that can work on this, on this monolith. Um, what we do is we reach for high alignment and high autonomy. Uh, and I think that's also a, another valid point here which is worth thinking about, which is uh, we've got these, these small teams, uh, all these autonomous teams, um, but we want them all working with high alignment. They're all, we're all driving towards the same area. Uh, this all sounds great and lovely, obviously, um, but I do want to be make it clear that we do make mistakes. Um, it's, not all, it's not all roses um, all the time. Um, and we learn from those, um, we adjust as fast as we can, and, um, and then we move on. So it's a real fail fast, learn fast type situation. Well, we certainly try to make it be that. Uh, these small cross-functional teams uh, are made up of three developers and a product analyst. One of those developers is going to be a team lead, um, and it's their job to understand the task um, or problem to resolve. And, um, to, and to make sure they have the skills that are needed to um, complete the tasks that they're working on. They all sit together um, in, a, in a small pod, and, um, and that helps with communication. And they take, when they take on these tasks, they're um, taking it on from, from, from end to end, um, full responsibility. This achieves a very quick to react um, process, and it reduces the dependencies because that pod is capable of doing uh, the task at hand. They're not waiting on other um, areas of the business or other pods. They're able to just get on with the job. So these, these pods, they're very autonomous. Um, so they govern themselves. And they are empowered um, and given the responsibility to make the right decisions. Uh, it's a really um, exciting thing to watch all of this actually working in action. They, they're um, very clear on what decisions they can make, because there are obviously decisions that they can't make as well, um, and I touched on that just earlier. Um, and they have a, a huge experience to answer their own questions. So uh, as I mentioned at the start, we are employing uh, senior developers. So each one of them is very, very capable, probably very, very capable of uh, doing my job as well. Um, so, and, that, and that is absolutely fantastic. You know, that's what we want. Um, they, they work within some very broad boundaries of the product, so the, the product team themselves are, are coming to uh, creating these ideas and um, these solutions, and then the, the pods are picking them up and working with them. And that product analyst within the pod, they know what needs to be, not what needs to be done and helps guide the developers, and the developers know how they're going to be doing it and help guide the um, product team and what the solution might be. The teams are not at all standardized. So we talked earlier about um, the code being um, very consistent and what have you. Um, the teams themselves are, are not standardized. They, um, they use whatever best fits uh, them, and they can change if need be. So uh, we have uh, one team at the moment running Scrum, and all the other teams running Kanban. That's just one example of um, they choose what, whatever they think fits best at the for their task. 
the teams will, will flex their work um, if other teams need help, and, um, and often they do this, and it's a great, it's a great thing to see. So, uh, for example, we might have a number of pods that are working on a huge piece of functionality, uh, and they might be running a little bit behind and struggling. We might have another pod that is actually doing very well, and they look like they're on target. What they will often do is they will make a decision as that pod that they can stop doing the work that they're doing, and they'll move over and help the other pods um, to get this across the line. Uh, and then they'll go back to their own work again. And it is, their, it is as much their choice as it is uh, my choice to be moving those resources around. Um, so it works great. Um, this achieves massive, absolutely massive ownership and motivation. So the, if you can imagine, if you're the developer and you're there um, during the day and you're making these really big decisions about how you work during the day and what you're going to be working on, um, obviously all within constraints, but we're all driving towards the same goal. So actually, when you're making those decisions, you're thinking about what the end goal is, um, and generally, you make the right choice. Um, highly communicative. So communication is massively important for us, um, especially because we've got all these little pods. So it's very much in the open, um, and we do this within the pods themselves. They are communicating between the, the product analysts and the, and the um, other developers but they're also communicating across the pods um, to make sure that the other pods are aware of what's, what's happening as well. And then they're communicating um, out broader to the whole business so that the other departments within the business are actually aware of um, what might be um, happening and when to expect a particular feature. Uh, it's all about <laughs> sharing, sharing the knowledge and communicating as much as possible. Another part of communication is our team lead forum. So each of those pods, as I mentioned earlier, um, have a team lead in them. And we all get together once a week um, for, a, for a short amount of time just to, to learn and share. And uh, what we do is we, we make some big decisions in these, uh, in these meetings. And uh, we talk about conventions and um, architectural designs and all sorts of new and crazy ideas that we might be thinking about. Um, we also might just review some code. Some randomly, we just pull out an MR and review it and talk about why we made the decisions we did. Um, and we even uh, will discuss um, sort of soft skill management stuff as well, so especially if one of the pod leads is, might be having a bit of difficulty or not sure how to handle the situation um, at a personal level. Um, he can talk about that, and uh, we can discuss it and come up with ideas. So it's a really, uh, it's a really big learning opportunity. And what, what we do is we, we take that uh, learning and we make sure that when the, pod, when the pod leads go back, they filter that information um, down into their teams as well so that everyone's um, on the same wave and we're all driving, again, driving forward on the same um, thoughts. So uh, this makes us all very tightly aligned. Um, and one of the reasons um, for this is that we believe that sort of product errors reflect the organisational errors. So um, if you think about that, um, often your, your, if your organization has problems or, or areas of communication, then these can show up quite easily in the product itself. It can become a bit disjointed. So um, by, by fixing that organisa those organizational areas, uh, errors with communication, we're able to um, fix the product errors. What this does is it achieves uh, shared knowledge clear business status, um, fast local decisions within those pods, shared vision, and collaboration. Sorry, wrong way. Um, so, um, the whole experience. Um, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on what, the, what it's like to, to work at Figit and, and, and what we um, expect um, as well as um, how we, how we uh, work just as a, on a sort of a daily basis and what have you as well. So every developer can deploy to production. Um, I'm not sure if that's, I've kind of got so used to that I'm not even sure if that's common um, to be honest in, um, in other businesses as well. Um, but you can deploy to production. In fact, we, we even had um, a giant red button at one point. Um, I think it might have been mentioned in last year's uh, talk, actually, where anyone could walk past and hit the button, and boom, there goes another deploy out to production. Um, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> Slightly scary sometimes, but hey. 
<laughs> live on edge. Um, <laughs> the, um, and a developer's environment can be up and running in just a few minutes, so I think that's a really important point to make again. We're not getting bogged down uh, with all of this um, development requirements of, um, for your environment. You can um, spin that up and just get cracking on with um, exactly what we employed you for, which is um, producing awesome code. Uh, we often have um, new devs pushing to production on day one. I think maybe the, the record at the moment is just over three hours. So that's pretty cool. A guy sat down in a seat um, and he smashed out some code um, and he deployed it in, I think it was uh, literally like three hours and 12 minutes, something like that. Um, he had um, a fix on production. So there is a bit of a challenge there. If anyone ever comes to work um, for us at Figured, you feel free to um, try to beat that record. <laughs> Go on, you know you want to. <laughs> um, so, so how do we how do we do that? How do we allow everyone to um, just deploy to production? How do we allow brand new devs to um, slam code onto production? So we do that um, through our MR reviews. Um, we do that through really good pipelines and tests and stuff. And we do that through all that high communication because we're really confident about um, the status that our code is in. Um, and and um, all of this helps protect us from mistakes and lets us get on with the, the coding and the, and the delivering of the product. Um, we really live strong by our values and we celebrate those when we use them, and when, sorry, when they're used. And we want um, consistency across teams, but not compliancy. Uh, we question the constraints rather than uh, design to the constraints and we strive for simplicity, consistency, and predictability. Um, we know, we all know um, in Figured where the, business main f where the business's main focus is, and we drive the majority of our energy um, towards that. We also communicate a lot, and I think I've said this probably about 10,000 times in this talk, we communicate a lot, um, and that is a huge challenge, and we're always working on it. <coughs> Um, we, uh, honestly, we always make mis you know we often make mistakes um, in this as well. You think you've communicated really well, and then you discover that someone didn't know something, and they really should have. And you learn from that, and you just try and build on that on those communication skills. Um, and probably above all of that, and what you would have got from the um, video earlier on, which I hope you all enjoyed, um, is that we actually eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> so. Um, that's, that's my talk, and I hope you all um, managed to get something from that, um, some ideas that you can maybe take away and, and start to put to practice um, yourselves. I certainly have got a lot, of, um, a, a lot of ideas from all the talks that you guys have given. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's me, and I'd like to say a special thank you to um, Michael and the Laracorn team uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you. <laughs>